All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Lenovo IdeaPad S340-15iil Touch. All right, so somebody else opened this already because they brought it somewhere for liquid damage, um, but I'm going to see what's going on. Anyways, um, first what you want to do is remove all the screws from the bottom. So these are T5 screws. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, if you're opening yours for the first time, please let me know because one of the screws here that was in here was smaller than the rest, and it was this one down here. I doubt that's how it's supposed to be, um, but if you open yours and you find that one screw is smaller from the bottom, let me know which one it is so I can put it in the right place, or if I'll, or I'll know that the other person that worked on it did something weird. Um, they probably just threw all the screws in a in like a bucket and lost the the right screw anyways so once you take all those screws out uh, as usual I'll open it like this there's a gap on the bottom here so on this layer here there's a gap I just use my fingernails and then I push with my thumb on the palm rest don't push on the trackpad just the palm rest all right so I that's how I pop off the cover just like that once you get that out you can close the screen and then I like to turn the computer sideways so it's easier to go. And then I just run my fingernail, uh, fingernail along the side while I kind of lift it up. And there you can see the cover already came off. But if it doesn't come off already, you'll probably want to run your fingernail along the other side while lifting it up. And then you can kind of just wiggle this to pop the back clips off. All right, so that's what the bottom of the cover looks like. Not really anything to look at. We'll set that aside. Most likely all the screws inside are pH 1. Um, that's usually what they are, um, but anyways, first thing you want to do is disconnect the battery. <clears throat> this looks similar to the other Lenovo model I just recently worked on, um, but yeah, we'll remove the screws for the battery. So there's three screws it looks like, okay. So there's one here, one up here, and then one down below where my hand was blocking, one down here. Okay, so remove those three, then we'll lift the battery up. Be careful because the wires are going underneath here, so you want to unroute those. Okay. I don't know if the other person um, routed this wire in here because I don't remember on the other one that I had to remove this red wire, which is for the other speaker. So to remove that, I'm going to actually disconnect the speaker cable. Um, I'll show you here. So to remove this kind of cable, I just take my two fingernails and then I kind of just wiggle the connector like this. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. It came out. Sometimes you have to keep wiggling it. Don't try and just force it out because you can rip the connector off or damage something. All right. So now I'm just going to unroute the cable from the battery. Oh, you can't even see that. Okay. So here, I'm just going to unroute the cable from the battery here. All right. And then the battery, make sure the battery connector is still in place here. So to remove that, same thing, there's not really anything to grip very well here, so what you have to do is kind of grab the battery cables, okay? Try and grab it close as close to the connector as you can, and then just wiggle, 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 wiggle and it'll come out just like that, okay? Um, if you need to replace the battery, the battery model, let's see, is L1, oops, here we go, L18C3PF6. Right now I have the flash on on my camera. Um, we're going to see if my camera is going to overheat quickly or not. I hope not because I have to do a complete disassembly on here. But the flash helps a little bit so I have it on right now. Alright, so let's zoom back out. Let's see here. So I'm going to go over the quick stuff that most people are going to need like the RAM, the SSD, and the hard drive. So to change the RAM out there's this metal cover here. To remove that I just get my fingernail underneath the thing. Let me see if I can actually show this because usually I don't do a close-up of this. But if you look here, there's a metal plate. So I just get my fingernail under there and then I just pop it up just like that. Okay. And then you just do that all around just like that. Okay. You can use plastic pry tool too. You don't want to use a metal tool because you can damage something. Oh, one thing I should mention, after you remove the battery, it's always a good idea to press and hold the power button for about 15 seconds. Open the cover slowly because it's missing two of the screws that are usually holding the hinge. But yeah, hold the power button down for about 15 seconds just to drain any power. Um, and then that should 
Yeah. That should make it so there's less chance that you'll damage something if you drop something metal on the board. All right, so we'll close that. Usually if you're changing the RAM or the hard drive SSD, you don't need to take the battery out or anything. But to be safe, if you don't know what you're doing or if you're not careful or if you're clumsy, it's a good idea because there's less chance you'll damage anything. Anyways, the RAM, you pull the two tabs to the side. Um, let me do a close-up of that because I usually never show that either. All right, basically you just pull these two to the side, the RAM will pop up, then you kind of lift it and then pull it back, okay? So the RAM here, if you need it, is PC42666V. All right, so that's what you need. Then there's a M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD here. So the way you know is this little label here. If you can see it, it says PCIe uh, PCI Express NVMe. So that's how you know it's PCIe NVMe. Sometimes you can tell by the way it has only like, it'll only have like one notch in the card. But um, yeah. So um, I actually don't need to take this thing out to remove the motherboard. But there might be liquid underneath. So let me see. Maybe I'll just take it out anyways. Try and be careful with the sticker. Even though it's liquid damage, it's probably voided warranty anyways. Um, but yeah. All right, oh, once you're done with the RAM, make sure that you have it pushed in all the way, and then you push it down while pushing it in, all right? All right, then you can put the thing, the cover back on. I don't know if there's a right side up way if, if the other person put it back in wrong, but I'm pretty sure I took it out from this way, so I'll just put it back the same way. All right, so now we're gonna take the M.2 SSD out you can see sorry my hands in the way I know but I can't help it all right so undo the screw okay set the screw aside the stick um, the m.2 uh, SSD stick will pop up like just like the RAM then you can pull it out so yeah there's not really anything under there nothing to do with that it looks like there might be some liquid residue on this so I'll, I'll clean that out later. I'll leave it aside. All right, so we got the speaker connector out. Let me zoom back out for you. So we took the speaker, disconnected the speaker cable. Oh, now I need to show the hard drive. So the hard drive, just like the other model underneath this speaker. So to remove the speaker, you kind of just pull it up. It just has little rubber things that hold it in place. Then you can move that aside. So um, there's two screws up here and then two screws down here also like the other model I just recently did so take out those four screws I think I need to be right-handed for this or move my camera somewhere else because my left hand is always in the way but I'm left-handed so I can't help it anyways take out those two screws this is just to get this metal caddy out of the way all right, then you just lift this up. They do have this metal bracket, just like the other one, holding the four screws. Um, when you put the hard drive in, if you're gonna add one, there's a two and a half inch SATA, 2.5 inch SATA hard drive. You can put a hard drive or an SSD in here. Um, when you replace the hard drive, you can just throw this metal thing away. You don't need it for anything. It's just a placeholder to keep the screws there. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna move the speakers back here. All right. Okay, so now we're going to have to disconnect everything. We got the trackpad cable here. I'm going to zoom in so you can see all of that. Okay, so this looks almost exactly like the other one I worked on, but the model number is different. Okay, let me try and get everything in view. We've got the trackpad connector here. You flip up that little latch, and then you can pull the connector out. Same thing with the keyboard, but the latch is on this side. Flip that up, then you can pull the cable out. Kind of be careful because these cables are a little bit fragile. Okay. Before they said they were having keyboard issues, then they brought it somewhere, and then when they got it back, um, the keyboard issue kind of fixed itself, they said, but then um, the computer was turning itself off randomly, so I'm not sure what's going on. Probably some components are shorted, or um, something is not good, all right? So, got that cable out. They did kind of double stick adhere this together so you can't really separate the layers or you'll probably end up damaging the cable. So just be careful with that. All right, move the speaker cable out of the way. They did route, oh, 
I guess you can't see that. I'll just remove this first and then I'll zoom out. So let's remove this orangey cable. That's the keyboard backlight cable. Okay. So if you're going to peel off the tape, make sure to hold the cable down so it doesn't, um, um, what do you call, it doesn't crease the cable. Yeah, you don't want to crease the cable or you can damage it. All right, so flip up the latch on that one as well. And then you can pull the cable out. Okay, just like that. This tape is kind of in the way. I don't know why they only put this tape on that cable. This is a capped on tape. I think it's like a high temperature, I don't know if it's, also ha um, blocks, I think it also is, acts as like electrical tape. All right, so, but I don't know why it's there. It's not needed. Anyways, then you got, sorry. Okay, so you got the speaker cable running along here. You don't need to take that out. You can just leave it there. Um, then we got this cable here for the board with the CMOS battery. So like before on the other one, I took this out and then I reset the CMOS um just to see if it would let the computer turn back on, but that one was completely dead. It didn't do anything. So there's a CMOS board, the CMOS button here. Then you got um, all the the one key recovery button there, the power button light or the power light, the SD card, and the two USB ports. So if you happen to break this somehow, you can easily replace it. You just take this um, cable out. So flip up the latch can disconnect this. This looks actually exactly like the other one I worked on. So I'm going to take this cable out. Okay. I'm getting like deja vu. Okay, this is kind of stuck. I don't remember the other one being stuck like this. But come on. Why is it stuck like that? Do I need to take out the fan? All right, well, let's take out the fan first. So we'll take out the fan. There's just two screws holding it, and then you have to move this LCD cable out of the way, the LVDS cable, just like the other one. When did I do that one? It feels like only a day or two ago. But anyways, we're going to remove the cable, the LVDS cable. Let me zoom in on there. So this cable, the way you remove those, you pull up on this tab. Usually it's really hard to remove it. So what I do is I get my fingernail underneath the corner, just like the RAM cover. And then while I'm pulling it, I pop up the one edge. So just like this. Okay. Oh, it's still stuck. Wow. This one's stuck pretty strong. There we go. All right. So if you do this, you want to make sure to use a plastic tool or your fingernail, but be careful with the tool because you can't really feel how much force you're putting and you might damage this connector on the board. Okay, so let's zoom back out. All right, so I'm gonna unroute this cable just like the other one. They put some tape to hold it onto the board. I'm just gonna leave it there. And then we're gonna remove this um, connector for the fan and it unplugs just like the speaker fan. You just grip the edges like that, pinch it and then wiggle, 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 wiggle. There we go. All right, make sure that you get the cable out of the way because it's still caught over here all right hopefully i'm getting everything in view in the recording and now you got the fan out so if you need to replace the fan that's how you would do it they don't have any model numbers here they do have this tiny label but i don't think this will be very useful you'd probably be better off looking up the lenovo model number and then um, getting that okay let's zoom back out oops i don't know what i pressed on my phone. Okay. So now that we got the fan out, this cable should be easier to take out. Okay. So just pull it out like that and then pull this one out like that. We'll set that aside. All right. If you need to remove this board, there's the screws holding the hinge in place. So remove those two screws. Okay. All right, now we got the two screws out. The trick to get the hinge out is you open the, the screen slightly. Um, try and open it close to the hinge. You don't wanna open it from far away because then you can um, put too much leverage and damage something. So I try and open it as close to the hinge as I can. And then I put the screen down. Now there's a small gap. I can use my hand and lift the hinge up, okay? Once you got that up, then you can take this board out Oh, actually, there, I forgot. There's a screw there, just like on the other one. Oh, I remember now. Was that other one 
I think that one was also liquid damage. And then I cleaned the whole thing and it worked. So <laughs> this one's not dead though. Um, they just said it's like intermittent. So it like shuts itself off. So I'm going to pull the CMOS battery connector out because it's um, adhesive double stick tape to the board. Same thing like the fan and the other connector. Just grab, pinch it, and wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Come on, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. It's coming slowly. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Come on. Come on, you can do it. Come out. Come on. Wow, this one is held, holding in really strong. There you go. All right, now that you got that connector out, should be able to lift this out. I think I got all the stuff. There's no other hidden screws, yep. Okay, now you got the board out. So just like the other, I think there's also some residue here. Okay, same thing. There's that spongy thing and the, the little button there. Okay, so this is the one key recovery button on the side here. It's all blurry. Come on, focus. Oh, oops, that's what happened. There we go. I accidentally pushed the manual focus, but there's the one key recovery button, SD card slot. So I'm going to have to brush all this stuff off, make sure all the residue is gone. Okay, so now we got all of that. Let's take the wireless card out. I'm going to actually just disconnect the wireless um, card and leave it attached to the antennas. If you want to see how to remove the antennas, you can watch the other video I did because I'm going to leave the antennas attached. But basically, you pull up from the tail and then it will come out. Oh, phone overheated. I'll be back.